Thank you, Minister, for being in the Shannon today. I welcome the bill, but I am extremely disappointed by the watering down of protection for tenants in, uh, ten for the tenant for tenants it contains. It represents an unfortunate weakening of social solidarity we saw during the COVID-19 lockdown when we introduced strong emergency measures to support the vulnerable people, people in unemployment, tenants in the private rental market, that this government is withdrawing these protections at the earliest opportunity is extremely depressing. The bill has attracted a host of opposition amendments both here and in the Dáil and already cost the government two votes in the Dáil, including a junior minister. This should be enough to give any of its supporters cause for concern. In terms of Amendment 12, it is a straightforward change to delete an extremely mean-spirited provision of this bill. It is identical to one I proposed to the emergency COVID legislation in the last Shannon back in March. As you know, Minister, tenants in this country accrue legal rights the longer they remain in property. In the context of an Irish rental market where legal protections are extraordinarily weak compared to internationally, these Part 4 tenancy rights are extremely important for ensuring security of tenure, stability and in preventing homelessness for vulnerable tenants. They become even more so during a pandemic where a person's accommodation becomes a key part of their protection against a virus. Due to the eviction ban instituted in March and as a result of the extensions of the notice to quit periods proposed under this bill, tenants have remained and will be remaining in their homes for longer due to the increased legal protection for home from homelessness rightfully provided by us here in the Oireachtas. However, this subsection would ensure that these, this extra time that a tenant or a family were allowed to stay in their home at, at result as a result of these protections, are explicitly excluded from any assessment of their tenancy rights. Minister, this provision was wrong back in March, and it is wrong that you are proposing it here. People have been forced to remain in their homes for months as a result of government public health advice, legally required not to leave. That you would then express, expressly prohibit time spent under a legally enforced quarantine from contributing to an individual or family's tenancy rights and their capacity to stay in their own home is not fair and the provision must be removed. I urge you to accept this amendment, Minister. Thank you. Anyone else? Minister. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Senator. And uh, obviously, I know what your concerns that you have raised. Um, and uh, obviously, the key, thing, the key thing here is at the moment, in relation to Part 5, is that linking it to the emergency and in terms of additional protection that will be uh, afforded. And we have a fine balancing act in terms of what is going to be constitutional and what will work in this bill and what won't. And it's our considered view that after assessing this and having looked into it in detail through the department and through government that you have to continue as the economy opens up in terms of the various different stages to be linked to pay rent in a normal manner. And if it's a case that you're under pressure, if it's a case that uh, um, you are unable to pay due to the emergency, the clear protocols will be hopefully present on the passage of this bill where someone can seek protection. But in terms, in terms of bringing uh, part four into it, it is considered in the department that it is too big a step and it won't stand up. Thank you. It, 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 it's, I don't even think the amendment is in relation to people not being able to pay. It's that people have been living in their accommodation, paying their rent, living in the, in the residency that they have been living for a period of time, yet them living there, paying their rent, continuing their residency there, does not now add or accrue to the time spent living there to actually add to their legal rights. So this is not about any protections around their ability to pay or not to pay. It's the fact that they are residents within that home and the fact that their residency there is not accruing to them building up time in terms of their legal rights. Um, it just doesn't really make any sense. And I, I'm not sure that your response um, is, I, I'm not understanding it in relation to the amendment that I'm putting forward. Thank you.